Welcome back. In our last episode, we talked about blood sugar and its effect on metabolism. And today we're shifting the focus to fat, how it's stored, how to lose it efficiently, and really just overall facts mm -hmm. on the different parts of it. Yeah, great. Well, let's let's talk about like what fat is, role in the body. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about kind of what causes the accumulation of fat, which is probably the undesirable effect. And let's talk about how we tend to lose fat or like get rid of the fat that we want to have. Maybe that's a way to frame it up for context. So Luigi, maybe yeah, for sure. I think for the audience, let's talk a little bit about like the physiology of fat. Yeah. Like, is it needed? What's its role? Absolutely. Yeah, fat's important. So you want to th first think about, and we'll get into dietary fat in just a bit, as you mentioned, because you're sort of teeing it up here. But think about fat as an important energy source in the body. Like when we you know we eat foods, we convert some of these foods into fat storage, and that's really important. So you've got you know all day long your body is utilizing fat for energy okay we're also burning carbohydrates and maybe sometimes we break down some of our muscle uh, into you know protein amino acids but fat is this constant furnace of energy that's just burning so it's really essential okay um in terms of the body's storage of fat it comes in different locations and i know john we always talk about this but it's sort of like you want to think about your body, and maybe I'll let you talk about the cellular uh, sort of function of fat or the cellular structure, but fat is everywhere. It's like in your viscera. When people think about losing fat, they're always thinking about their visceral fat. That's kind of in the midsection. It's kind of covering some of the organs around the intestines and the, just below the liver. And so around this area, that's the visceral fat. Then there's like the subcutaneous fat. It's like literally if I'm just pinching my the skin on my arm, if I just go under the skin, there's like a layer of fat. And that kind of keeps us warm and acts as like an insulation, if you will. And then there's also like fat as an energy storage that's inside the muscle tissue. So it's interspersed all throughout the body. So I think the, the important thing is that fat is everywhere in the body. It is an important energy source. But since we're talking about the context of metabolic health, we wanna make sure that we're not having too much fat and we're keeping things in equilibrium. So John, I would sort of pass it over to you and talk about like, cells do cells need fat and do they yeah well you got fat? me you got me going there thinking about like the role of fat it's an energy source but it's just like essential to life mm. right you think of our bodies like there's a lot of things happening we have to compartmentalize mm -hmm. different things in the body we have to compartmentalize function right. in order to like convert food to energy and move there has to be like gradients of like things from high to low so you kind of need these like barriers between things to like section things off and so you need different types of building blocks. And so fats basically like, they basically make up the cell wall, the cell membranes, right? right? So they're compartmentalizing cells so they can like have different cells. You can compartmentalize one organ from another. So there's this very like innate structural requirement to like support life with fat. The cool thing is it's like also happens to be an energy source, right? So mm -hmm. it's almost like this double function kind of role in the yeah, body. I love it. I mean. Fat is essential. And I think if we kind of move over from the location and the structure and function of the body to what we eat on a regular basis, this is where the consumer can start to think about, or you know, all of us can think about our food choices. So you have to have, so there's some fats that we have in the body, and then there's some fats that we need to eat that are essential, as John was just kind of alluding to, because our cells are made up of fats. Like, like he was just saying, the cell, the phospholipid bilayer, which is kind of like the cell wall, but that's really like a plant. But in humans, we have this phospholipid bilayer. It's like the, the outer covering of the cell. Um, but when you eat fats, let's say you have a piece of fish, okay, that's rich in certain types of fats called omega-3s. And let's say you have a, a piece of bread that may have some grains and omega-6. These are both essential fats, but we want to have them in balance in the body because they have different types of um, functions and outcomes. So I think balance is important. Yeah, well, I think where you're going with that is like, um, if it gets kind of out of balance, like you're going to have this like deposition or this accumulation of fat, right? So if you're eating the wrong kind of fats or if you're having excess calories or if you're having high glycemic foods, which mm -hmm. are constantly spiking insulin, glucose and therefore spiking insulin. Mm -hmm. Insulin's like this, we talked about in earlier episodes, this build hormone. So it's right. going to tell your body, hey, those extra calories stored as fat. And there's kind of like an evolutionary reason for that is that and it's kind of a feast or famine is for survival. Like, you know, you, you would encounter some food in a prey or this is how animals survive. They might mm -hmm. gorge themselves on food. Their body makes a bunch of fat. Then mm -hmm. they can survive for periods of not having food. 
So the, I think the challenge is like, how do we prevent this like deposition and like what's the right. negative consequence? Right. So I th that's great. I think that point is really key because so it comes down to if we're kind of simplifying this, it's like the amount of fat, like, which is kind of J John, I think, is covering right now. Like we want to make sure that we're judicious what we're with what we're eating we just can't just be eating you know like a tub of butter and lard and like just fat all day we need some fat and then it's the composition of the fat if i'm eating fish all day that's great if i'm just eating bread all day maybe not so great we need to have balance because we need them both so i would say the amount and the composition is very important yeah what you um, were saying too yeah. um what is you were saying that our body stores fat so what is that stored fat you were saying that we need to be able to use and that our body's storing what is that used for why are why is mm. it storing like mm. what how can we help people wrap their heads around stored fat yeah that's that's a really good yeah. question so like we touched on a little bit in an earlier podcast and maybe we didn't kind of go deep enough on it but the first place this fat gets stored is around our organs and what we said is that these organs they're not or the, the, this visceral fat around our organs it's not getting a lot of blood flow so that the fat cells are kind of like not super happy to make it really simple they're releasing these cytokines which are these inflammatory compounds and what happens is you get this sort of like cascade of inf inflammation that's infecting a lot of different organs in the body and that term for this like holistic kind of like haywire effect is called metaflammation. And so it's this kind of metabolism and inflammation that are going haywire. And what's happening is like, it's really disrupting all your organs. And that's why managing like body fat composition is so important for overall metabolic health. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a key to, as we've been talking at this consistent thread that we're talking about through these series of podcasts is metabolic health. And it's the body has a certain equilibrium and we want the natural state of things to flow normally. And again, the challenges, as John is like in some of the earlier episodes, he talked about like these, these small insults with our modern food supply of high calories, high sugar, high fats, salty foods, all this aggregation really puts us in a state of imbalance. So getting back to a regular balance, like an equilibrium, I call it, is kind of key, and that's no different than with fat. Fat metabolism is important. We we need it, but we don't need a whole lot of it. You know, we need, and we've got plenty to survive. Yeah, yeah, and I think I mean, so many people are so focused on the the aesthetics of fat, like you know, I have some fat here, and so there's like this very uh, kind of under the skin fat, and that's not really as problematic as the mm -hmm. organ fat. Right. They kind of co-correlate, like you know, if you have skin fat everywhere, and a lot of it, you probably have a lot of abdominal fat. But I want people to think about like. The problem of fat, it doesn't look great, but it's kind of doing this like damage inside the body. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's what's kind of causing this like metabolic problem. Yeah. So yeah. I think this is a good opportunity to maybe talk about like, well, how do we, if we do have a lot of fat and we're interested in losing, like what are the strategies to kind of like unwind some of that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I would think of, so I think about the two of you as athletes. We've been doing this podcast series talking about your uh, experience as a softball an elite softball player, high school, college, and you know, you're obviously an athlete. And then having known John for many years, I know he's an elite cyclist. He's ridden like these 100 mile road races. So I think about the two of you using, you wake up, you'll have breakfast, and then you'll do some sports, right? And you may, how long is a softball game, Madison, typically? Um, probably like an hour and a half. Maybe. Okay, hour and a half, and maybe some pre-post training. So within, let's say, a couple hours, you've probably burned through a lot of your carbohydrate stores, and maybe you're reaching for a, a replenishment drink that's got a little carbohydrate in it. But And then I think about John on a 100-mile bike ride, you guys are burning through your carbohydrate stores pretty quickly. So you're trying, so now your body's relying on fat. Fat, it's always relying on fat, but it's especially relying on it. And you want to try and feed it some carbohydrate, but you're always got this furnace of fat that's burning. So think of it as like this, it's a primary, I would say primary engine, but it's a primary source of, of calories because your brain and your heart and the muscles, they need to keep operating, right? They need, they need performance. So I just want to kind of reinforce the, the idea that fat is essential in the body and it has a true function for not only for performance for you guys at the elite level, but in daily activities when we're cruising around and going to work, you know, yeah. we're well, always burning fat. I, I feel like there's this misunderstanding though of like eating fat makes you fat. So mm. it's like uh, olive oil, right? I put on salad pretty much every day. Like if you're kind of trying to dial back to olive oil on the on your a salad, like I don't think it's gonna have a huge impact on like your fat. Now it's more calories. So certainly more calories is gonna lead to weight gain and fat deposition, but like 
I feel like it's like the 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 logical flaw is like eat fat, I'm gonna get fat. Mm -hmm. and so we have to be really mindful of the kind of fat. Is a lot of omega sixes, right. things like that. Yeah, and I think the ratio is really important because if we go back probably a hundred years and talk to any of our family members, they probably had a more balance of their fats, their dietary fats. And the, speaking specifically, the omega threes and omega six. And now John's touching on like omega nines, olive oils. And but those are, when they're in balance, things metabolically are kind of in equilibrium. Again, the problem is when people are having too many of one fats, typically the omega sixes that are in a lot of industrialized countries, then it throws things a little bit out of balance, a little bit out of whack. So that's why folks are talking about reducing certain types of fats and eating more omega threes and things like that. So it's just getting into balance. It's really what it's about.